Hey guys, this is Ron here at Tales of Scales. We're gonna do a little video here on bioactive tanks with isopods and springtails and all that good stuff. So our little uh, isopod expert and lover of the bugs, Michael, is gonna go ahead and uh, talk about it here real quick. So let's get him on camera, there he is. And here we go. All right, so this is one of the types of isopods. These are actually the ones that are inside of all the tanks here. So these are dairy cow isopods. Uh, these guys are really well known for breeding really fast. They get really big, like that one right there. So these guys will multiply just really fast depending on how many you have in there. I mean, there's hundreds just in this little tub. So we got these guys as well. These are the powder orange. These guys are super bright orange, really cool. These guys don't breed as fast, but once you get them going, they they will definitely go. All right, so what do you got in this? What do you got in this uh, this tank here? Uh, so the tubs and the tanks are about the same. They're both going to be a mixture of worm castings, sphagnum moss. Uh, there's some charcoal for the springtails. You can see them. Or I don't know if you can see them. Those little tiny white specks are the springtails. And then from there, it's just the leaf litter, their food. They eat a really wide range of things. This is actually the crested gecko powder. So that's pretty inexpensive food then? Yeah, you just, you know, you get a little bit of that, put it in there, a little bit goes a long way with these guys. And then any extra food will actually mold up, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because the springtails actually eat the mold. So that way, that's how it kind of works out in the bioactive setting. It's kind of like a cycle. And then once it gets broken down, the plants inside of the tank will actually thrive off of everything that the isopods and the springtails are breaking down. So, so it'll keep the plants going. Why would I want these bugs in my tank? So the nice thing with the isopods- What is the purpose? Is aside from their other food and the leaf litter and everything that they eat, they will actually eat the waste of any animal that you keep inside of the tank. So, say you keep geckos in here, you keep your snakes in here. Every time they go to the bathroom, the isopods are actually going to break it down. So that's so. The, there, where's the bathroom at? Anywhere. There's like a literal room in here. Yeah, there's a little toilet behind oh. the plants. Oh, okay. Yeah, we just kind of try to keep it, you know, in the back so they don't get nervous. So I'm gonna set up a cage, I'm gonna put all these goodies in there, I'm gonna throw these bugs in there. Are these bugs gonna hurt my animal? No, not at all. So the isopods are mainly, or only I should say, gonna break down any kind of waste. So you don't have to worry about them potentially eating your animal, kind of like other carnivorous bugs that are out there, like the crickets or things like that. And then a good thing too is if, say, you throw too many crickets in there, they die in your tank, the isopods will actually eat them as well. So that'll get rid of that nasty cricket smell. Exactly. Oh, okay. What about this tank right here? What do we got going on here with this one? So this is the same thing. This is also a bioactive setup. The only thing with this one is, obviously, it's more vertical. Uh, this one is a little more set up. This is one I brought from home. So it's the same thing. You have your substrate. You have your leaf litter, your plants. There's the sphagnum moss in there. So it's the same setup, just looks a little bit different. So this one's just cooler? Pretty much. Oh, okay. Is there any animal that you house in this besides your bugs? Uh, this one is primarily set towards like crested geckos. You know, got plenty of places for them to climb up and hide in the plants and things like that. Nice. And so what do you like about these bugs so much? Why would you want to become an isopod expert? So aside from the fact that a lot of them just look really cool, it's just super helpful not having to clean your tank so often with these guys in there just because they break down so much of the waste. And so, then it also helps a lot in reducing the smell of the tanks. So you say there's multiple kinds? Yeah, there are quite a few out there. These are just the two that we have right now. What today. would some of the other ones potentially look like? Are there blue um, ones? There are blue ones. There are, they're called powder blues. They're like a dark blue, almost black with almost a purplish tint to them. Uh, there's little white ones, little purple ones, and then there's all sorts of patterns and colors. Are these bugs super delicate? Not so much. They're pretty hardy. 
Uh, a lot of people compare them to the roly polies that you see like outside. They're pretty similar, same family of insect, but these guys in themselves are super hardy. Uh, in other words, it's pretty hard to kill them. Okay, what about humidity levels? Does it have to be high, average, low, so press a gecko-ish? These guys in particular don't need super high humidity, but they also don't do bad in high humidity. So if the humidity drops, you don't have to worry about killing them. And then they'll also do just fine in really high humidity, kind of like with the crested geckos. What about temperatures? Temperatures, anything your animal lives in, they'll live in as well. They so what about a bearded dragon? They can do with the bearded dragon. The only thing with that is you want to make sure there's a pretty deep layer of substrate just so that if they do want to get away from the heat, they can. What if my bearded dragon decides to eat them because he likes to eat bugs? Well, that is the nice thing about these guys is they can actually double as feeders as well. If your animal eats them, there's no issue there just because they are captive bred. So if your animal eats them, you're just out of bug, but they breed pretty fast. So you don't really have to worry about your animal eating so them. So tell us about this kit right here because it looks like it says it's for sale. So this one is, this is pretty much the same thing as this one. It's just gonna be a little bit smaller. It doesn't have the branch in there. Looks like it's a 10 gallon tank. It is a 10 gallon tank. So right now this one has the two pothos vines in it. This one has the same substrate. You have your drainage layer, you have your leaf litter, the sphagnum moss. Uh, you can't see them move around too much right now, but there are, I'd probably say, close to 50 isopods in there right now. Springtails, I have no idea. They're just too small to count, but they are definitely in there. And how much do isopods run? Uh, it depends on which ones you want. So the dairy cows in particular is, you'll usually see them for about $20 for 10 of them, and it'll go up from there. Okay. Now what about this plant? Can... Uh certain animals be around that plant or should I be a little bit more careful on that type of plant? So, Make sure they don't eat it. So it depends on plants. This one in particular does just fine with any kind of like gecko or snakes, things like that. It's pretty safe all around. Uh, you do want to be careful if you do decide to introduce any other kind of plant into the tank. You just want to make sure you do your research. Uh, these ones in particular do just fine though. You don't really have to worry about anything. But I wouldn't want that in with the bearded dragon now, would I? Probably not. Okay. All right, guys. Well, that's our little video on isopods. Hopefully you like it. Give us a like and go ahead and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you soon.